Okay, good. So let's start. Uh, hello, everyone. Good evening. This is Shaima Tariq, Training and Business Development Manager from the Oman Society of Engineers. I am pleased to welcome you all to our today's webinar, Building Capacity in Energy Management with an Introduction to Energy Management Essential Certificate. First, I would like to love, I would love to give you a short brief about Oman Society of Engineers, OSE, for those of you who don't know about it. OSE is the only official association in Oman that is dedicated to advance all engineering related matters. Our vision is to become the main reference body of engineers and engineering excellence in Oman. Our mission is to serve engineers, engineering profession and community through pursuance of engineering excellence and professional development of engineers in Oman. Of course, the professional development of the local engineers comes on top of our priority. Therefore, we're always keen on delivering the latest knowledge areas in the engineering field through our webinars and training programs. Definitely, we do that through enhancing our partnerships with international and regional technical institutions. And in this regard, recently OSE has launched a partnership with Energy Management Institute UK, as both institutions recognize the significant importance of transforming the global and local energy system towards a local carbon future. Now, I am pleased to introduce our webinar speakers, Engineer Abdul Latif Al Bitawi, Certified Energy Management Professional, and Engineer Apostolos, who is the Training Manager in the Energy Management Institute. Welcome, Engineer Abdul Latif. Welcome, Engineer Apostolos. The floor is yours. Thank you, Shaima. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is uh, Abdul Latif Al Bitawi. I'm the Secretary General and Honorary Vice Chair of the Energy Institute Middle East branch. I'm based here in Dubai, uh, and I'm really glad to be with you, everyone, tonight. I would like to thank Oman Society Engineers for helping organizing this webinar. Uh, before we start, a few uh, housekeeping points. Um, I'd like to encourage everyone really to ask questions throughout the webinar. Uh, to do that, uh, you can go for the Q&A uh, button on your screen and send your question. We will look at the questions and answer them towards the end of the webinar. Uh, we will endeavor to answer as many questions as possible. If we were not able to answer all of the questions because of the time, we will try and answer them later by sending you the answers. We will also run one poll throughout the webinar you will see the question and some options coming up on your screen. So please make your choices and click submit. Now, if you allow me, I'll start my presentation. Um, I'll first talk about the Energy Institute, introduce the Energy Institute for those who are not aware of Energy Institute. So the EI, it's, uh, a professional body, non-for-profit professional body based in London in the United Kingdom. We have an interdisciplinary network of about 20,000 people and 250 companies working in all parts of the energy system worldwide. We have several branches, 13 based in the United Kingdom and seven international branches, including the Middle East branch, which we operate from Dubai, but it covers all countries in the Middle East, so including GCC, Iraq, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria. What the Energy Institute provides, it provides a range really of, um, of, of useful, let's say, or benefits to the, uh, to the industry. So we start with the individual memberships. Uh, EI memberships enables the member as an individual to develop professional career, using the online CPD facility and becoming professionally qualified um, uh, person. And the EI has the only energy specific chartered qualification from professional bodies. The Energy Institute also helps enhancing knowledge and learning, and it expands your network by attending different events and by connecting with likewise professionals. 
Also, as a member, you get significant discounts on different events that EI arranges, organizes, or support organizing. There are a big number of company members uh, worldwide, uh, including some of them here in the region, like Kuwait, Adnok, Aramco, Qatar Energy. It was Qatar Gas before, and now it's Qatar Energy. And there are different levels of company members, company member, technical company member, and technical partner. Each one has its own if you say a uh, uh, list of benefits, um, depending on the need of the company. DEI has a, a, a good practice technical work program uh, in which a group of professionals come together representing technical partners and other professionals working through uh, various numbers of committees. Uh, we have about 100 technical committees that they meet annually. And they work on different subjects and topics related to the energy industry, whether it's oil and gas, renewables, nuclear, etc. And they come up with uh, very useful, very also rich publications, including guidance, uh, notes, etc. That can be used as references by professionals working in all sectors of energy. The Energy Institute also helps skills professional and professional development by supporting its members. There are a number of tools that the members can use. One of them is my career path, and this is an online professional development tracking tool. So those who become members will learn more about this and know how to use this helping them. Uh, there are also a number of membership workshops that the, the Energy Institute runs uh, frequently, again, to help spread the knowledge amongst its members. We have also a mentoring program to mentor those who are interested uh, and those who are new to the profession. So there are options available to you as a member, uh, whether you decide to become a professional member. So we have three grades or a registered title. We have chartered engineer, incorporate engineer, engineering technician, chartered scientist, and chartered environmentalist or we have the unique chartered titles to the EI, which are the Chartered Energy Engineer, Chartered Petroleum Engineer, and Chartered Energy Manager. We run a number of activities uh, worldwide, but also in the Middle East. Uh, the flagship events, uh, the IP Week used to, to be named IP Week in the past, International Petroleum. However, from next year, this is changing to International Energy Week. We have also the EI Awards, uh, where we recognize uh, achievements of professionals or companies in this field of energy. And we have also our regional uh, event, which is the Middle East HSC and Sustainability Week that we run every year. This year, it's going to be virtual uh, in Bahrain. In the past three years, we used to run face-to-face -face in Dubai. Uh, inshallah, after you know, things are becoming better, and restrictions are easing. So inshallah, next year will be face to face and we will continue running this uh, important event in the region. Part of what EI provide really is training and it's an industry based training. We do cover a, a range of, of topics and courses in four main areas, including energy management, which is our topic of interest for tonight. And my colleague Apostolos will cover this in more details uh, later. We also have learning affiliates. So learning affiliates are academic institutes, university, colleges, etc., who can join the Energy Institute as learning affiliate. And they get a number of benefits, including free studentship member, membership, uh, special career talks, access to database and some publications, uh, we have a number of affiliates based in, in the region, including Oman Technical College in, in Sultana of Oman and others. AI can also accredit uh, courses uh, by, uh, that, that are run by those institutes uh, if, if they decided to do so. We also like to work and collaborate with a number of institutes, organizations, in various energy sectors, whether they are companies, uh, professional bodies, uh, governmental authorities, and so on. We have an, a network that we work with closely in the region. Uh, you can see the logos of a number of them, and they do come from different sectors with different, if you say, areas of specialty. 
but that we believe as EI, we all work together for, for the benefits of, of our uh, community. Recently, we were very pleased really to work with Oman Society of Engineers. Uh, we've been working with them for some time to come up with this collaboration, with this agreement, which we are very happy really to, to get it uh, concluded. And this is really the first, if you say, activity uh, to introduce this collaboration. And um, if you say, to celebrate also the, the, uh, the collaboration with Oman Society of Engineers. Uh, as we have launched a partnership, as Shaina mentioned at the beginning. The partnership will focus on the provision of professional engineering title. So building capacity through delivering qualifications, training programs, and sharing independent authoritative knowledge and information about energy. We believe that this agreement will bring internationally recognized energy qualifications, information, and expertise to the energy community in Oman. And as a starting point for the partnership with recent national initiatives, such as the National Energy Efficiency Center in progress, now it is the perfect time really to be launching the EI's world leading energy management qualification in Oman. And this is what we are really looking forward to work with Oman Society of Engineers to provide this, um, this program to the members of uh, Oman Society of Engineers, but also to the wider uh, professionals who work in, the, uh, in Oman. Thank you for, for listening to my presentation. This is all about Energy Institute, what we do, and again, a brief really about this uh, interesting and important collaboration with Oman Society of Engineers. Um, as I said, as a branch, we, we are keen really to work with all our stakeholders in the region and Oman, of course, is on top of uh, our, our list. Uh, we will be looking forward to work more with Oman Society of Engineers and their members in future events and uh, looking forward really to work with you. As I said, I encourage you to post your questions on the Q&A uh, button or using the Q&A button and we will answer them towards the end. Um, before I hand over to my colleague, uh, we'll have the first or actually the only poll question. So I encourage you really to answer this question. Can we have the quest poll question, please? So the question says, how does your organization manage energy? You can choose only one answer. You do not care about energy usage. You only do things when we have to. There is a system in place to manage energy. We actively seek to improve energy usage. Energy management is core to how we do business. We'll give you some time to select your answer. In the meantime, I'll stop sharing my screen. Okay, can we have the results, please? Okay, wow, that's interesting. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll hand over to my colleague Apostolos. Yes, thank you. We see the results. And they seem really very interesting, at least to me. Okay, uh, Apostolos, the floor is yours. Thank you, Abdulatif. 
Hi, everyone from London, and thank you all for joining today's webinar. My name is Apostolos Grimbas, and as the plaintiff said, I'm the training manager at the Energy Institute. I am looking after our energy and carbon management training portfolio, and my key areas of responsibility are content development, business development, and quality assurance. I hold a BSc in Physics from the University of Athens, Greece, and an MSc in Energy, Environmental Technology, and Economics from City University, London. Um, I would like to take you through a short introduction of our energy management training framework. Uh, a few words on the approach, the EIS approach, when we decided to design and develop our own um, training portfolio. We acknowledge that ingenuity, talent, and skill of energy professionals is vital. And therefore, we developed um, a robust recognition process. We also acknowledge that, especially nowadays, with the energy transition and the much needed energy transition to a low carbon economy, energy management is a dynamic field that needs a flexible approach. So bear that in mind when we were developing our portfolio and trying to make it as flexible and as possible in terms of the various options and also CPD focused and to accommodate for the professionals, continuous professional development needs. We also acknowledge that leadership strategy and communication skills are of increasing priority. And therefore we developed and recognized a round set skill set, professional skill set that um, clearly looks into technical and engineering areas, but also goes beyond that. We have designed, developed, and currently offer a very comprehensive energy management training portfolio that is built around, is structured around three different training qualifications. The key objective and the key strength of the portfolio is that it has been designed to support energy management professionals throughout their careers. From the early stages, where they might not have any background in energy management, up to the point that they are experienced, advanced professionals that might want to gain chartership status with us and become chartered energy managers or chartered energy engineers, for example. The portfolio has been developed by industry topic experts who are professional members of the Energy Institute, chartered professionals in collaboration with DEI training teams. The courses are delivered by experienced energy management trainers. And in most cases, these are the same individuals that have been involved in the development process. They have all a breadth of industrial and practical back background and experience. We take pride in currently covering more than 40 different energy management topic areas across the three training qualifications, making it the most extensive energy management portfolio available um, at this stage, I would argue globally. And what we do is we regularly try to update it to be in line with the latest developments in the field. So it's a dynamic process that constantly needs to be updated content-wise. It is available both in classroom and also online and can be accessed from all over the world. And that is demonstrated by the number of international delegates that we, that we have. Um, as I mentioned, it is based on three training qualifications. Level one, certificate in energy management essentials. Level two, energy management professional. And level three, advanced energy manager. Level one is essentially our introduction, our introductory qualification. It provides a practical introduction to energy management and is designed for those that are new to the field and they want to get a solid understanding and uh, develop their knowledge on the core day-to-day -day tasks associated with an energy management role. Level two is by far our most extensive training qualification. It provides the knowledge and skills that are required of a modern professional energy manager. And the structure is unique in the sense that um, learners have the ability to choose from a wide range of optional topics. And that allows them to tailor the course to fit their own learning needs and future career aspirations. 
The final qualification is our most advanced energy management training qualification. It is designed for experienced energy managers. It focuses on providing the leadership and strategic skills that are required to function successfully at the senior level and be able to make communicate, which becomes crucially more and more important and implement effectively strategic decisions and influence the organization's policy through um, demonstrating their leadership skills. I will now get into more detail in each of these qualifications, starting with level one, which is a training qualification that we're very excited to deliver for the first time in Oman in due course. The key audience for our certificate in energy management essentials is those that look to begin a career in energy management or have recently taken up a role with energy management responsibilities on top of their day-to-day -day job. It is also suitable for those who might be looking to carry out energy audits themselves as part of a national regulation or policy. For example, uh, that would be ESOS in the United Kingdom. ESOS stands for Energy Savings Opportunity Scheme and mandates large organizations who meet specific criteria, qualification criteria, to carry out energy audits and identify and report energy saving uh, opportunities. Those audits can be um, undertaken by staff of those organizations internally, but they would need to be signed off by a more experienced professional. For the needs of the internal auditing, this qualification would help uh, those organizations to go ahead and uh, carry the energy audits. It is also suitable for those that come from a wide range of different fields, professional fields, including, these are just examples, procurement, facilities management, finance, corporate social responsibility, and sustainability. And they just want to gain a better understanding of the field of energy management and energy efficiency. And this qualification is available in two different delivery formats and as a five-day classroom training course that runs on five consecutive days and also as a fully online self-paced training course that can be started anytime and can be completed from the comfort of the learner's home. Content-wise, it covers 10 topic areas and also includes a work-based project. And these areas um, have been selected because they do focus on the day-to-day -day, um, aspects of the role. So we're looking into an introduction to energy management and how to build up an energy management process, metering and buying, monitoring and targeting techniques, regulations and standards, energy auditing in practice. This is all about carrying out uh, the energy audit and then energy audit and report writing. So at the end of the, of the audit, how to write up um, the necessary, the required report. Uh, it also looks into energy management solutions, project development, renewables, and engaging with the workforce, how to set up, how to mount an effective staff awareness campaign. The project component is uh, aims to carry, to give the opportunity to delegates to carry out a very simple energy audit themselves, make recommendations and write up an, an audit report. The, Energy audit and the report should focus, should cover just the site or a building of the learner's place of work. Or um, if it is a large site, they can just focus in one area of the facility or another area of the site. And if they act as a um, freelance consultant or the envisions to act as um, a freelance consultants, they can also uh, use one of the sites or buildings of one of their clients. If they have already undertaken an energy audit as part of their everyday work, which could be the case, um, we would accept submitting that project as long as it meets specific criteria. And that would be obviously being their own work. And also the report should follow a template, a standard template that we have designed and put together for, um, for this qualification. Before starting the project, um, we always advise the learners to uh, consider all the practical aspects of the um, survey, the energy survey that they will need to undertake, and discuss this before they start with their tutor and trainer of the course, so that they're fully prepared. The project should, um, when it comes to its scope, should include the following. 
an audit of the current energy consumption and costs, plus the associated carbon dioxide emissions. It in, should incorporate at least one management recommendation that could relate to an energy policy and to a process of setting up mon monitoring and targeting uh, techniques or uh, looking into the workforce um, around staff awareness. It should also include at least two recommendations that look into more technical measures. Examples of those could include replacement of existing lighting systems with modern LED lights, replacement of heating or boilers, um, lighting and heat, installing lighting and heating control systems, or looking into motors and drives. And this is particularly relevant to more of an industrial site, industrial facilities. To successfully complete the um, Certificate in Energy Management Essentials Training Qualification, delegates would need uh, to be assessed in two parts. They would need to complete an end of course assessment. This is essentially a basic exam that um, covers the learning objectives that have been touched on the qualification and consists of a mixture of multiple choice and short text-based questions. It takes about two hours and 15 minutes to complete it and is available online. They should also um, submit and successfully pass the uh, reports element, which, as mentioned, um, involves carrying out the short energy audit and writing up the report. The total time commitment is roughly 60 CPD hours, and that is made up of about five hours for each of one of the 10 topics that are included, plus 10 hours to um, work on their project. On this slide, I um, provide a few examples of the learning objectives that are covered within each of the 10 different topic areas, just to give you an idea of the level of detail that is, um, is provided. So when it comes to the two courses and two modules that look on energy auditing, starting with energy audit auditing in practice, um, when they go through the contents, by the end of this um, process, delegates will be able to assess the benefits and drivers of an energy audit. They will also be able to explain the whole process and the elements that uh, make up this process. And they will be able to review and analyze energy data as part of the audit process, describe the types of equipment and key considerations required when carrying out an energy audit, and finally undertake an energy audit theory themselves. And that would, could include their home, the workplace, or another type of building or facility. Uh, when it comes to the report writing module, delegates will be able to describe the contents and the writing style of an energy report, explain how reports are read and in what ways this should affect how they write, uh, make an effective business case for prospective energy saving opportunities, explain key points of best practice when developing and giving presentations, and finally, formulate an energy report from an audit uh, from the audit that they carried out. Moving on to the next training qualification, level two energy management professional. This is more advanced uh, than level one and essentially looks into those, to those who want to establish themselves as professional energy managers. So the ideal target audience um, is professionals with at least we would say two years of relevant experience, either working within the energy management field or another related area. And that could include building services, energy engineering, sustainability, facilities management, procurement and or energy consultancy. The aim is to provide all the theoretical knowledge of that is required of a modern energy and manager, but it looks to cover both the technical and managerial areas. And it is also suitable for those who might have just uh, completed the um, level one certificate in energy management essential training qualification. Although we always advise our graduates to just wait a minimum of six months to 12 months, anything between that, before they make a start with the next qualification so that they would have the opportunity within their day-to-day -day roles to um, implement the key points that they have 
learned and, and the skills that they have acquired by completing our qualifications. The, the level two qualification is available at the moment only as a fully online self-paced training course. And this is due to its breadth. I will touch on it um, in the next slides, but it is also available and we can and have delivered as a have delivered it as a blended um, training course, if you like, which means that um, this would incorporate both fully online and face-to-face -face elements. Um, a model could be five days of face-to-face -face classroom training uh, with the remaining um, elements of the qualification being completed uh, fully online as in our standard version. The structure is pretty unique in the sense that um, at the moment, it covers more than 20 different topics, and it acts as a, as a pool of, of topics that we constantly um, develop to make sure that we are in line with the latest developments of, of the energy industry and its needs. So an example is that at the moment, we're working on a, on a new level two topic area that looks into hydrogen-based energy systems. Um, but um, Due to its spread, because there are so many different topic areas, delegates are not required to complete, to select and complete all of them. Uh, they would need to complete five core topics. These are compulsory and form a mix of technical and scientific topics, such as heat transfer and fuels and combustion, and more soft skills, financial and, and managerial and topics, such as finance, procurement and risk assessment, and also project implementation. Once they complete those five core modules, the first one, the role of an energy manager, is just an, an introductory uh, module that um, sets the tone and provides more information on the whole qualification, how everything comes together. Once they complete those five topics, then they have the opportunity to uh, select their optional topics through two different lists. The first list includes just four topics and focuses on the key uh, common technical areas that the modern energy manager and traditional energy manager as well clearly would need to have a good um, knowledge and understanding of. And these are heating and ventilation, air conditioning and refrigeration, lighting and motor supplies. Moving on to the next list, list B of optional topic areas. There are more than 10 different topics at the moment that look into different uh, into various aspects of, of um, energy management. We're looking into building services. Examples uh, um, are the building physics and thermal comfort module or building management systems. We're looking into data analysis with two um, different modules, one on measurement and verification and the other one on data testing and analysis. We also look into more industrial areas such as compressed air, steam and process heating. A lot of sustainability topics and examples are energy and water efficiency, carbon management plants, and energy and the environment, and on specific sectors as well. So we have developed a course, energy management and transport, how to decarbonize and the transport sector. On, in total, they will need to select and complete 10 optional modules, and there is a requirement to um, select two, uh, at least two, minimum two of list A, then the more technical ones, and then the remaining eight could come either from list A or uh, list B. Similar to level one, there is um, a project component. Uh, the aim here is to plan, execute, and report an investigative study into the viability of a model of an energy management project. We're not pres prescriptive in respect of the actual Topic that they will need, learners will need to choose. But um, the requirement is that um, the topic, the project topic, will be related to at least two or more of the areas that are covered in, within the qualification and must demonstrate the technical and managerial skills uh, that have, the delegates have acquired through their studies. An example of past projects include um, the following uh, developing a fully functional and integrated smart metering system at an airport in the UK and carrying out an investigative study of the installation of an, an LED lighting system in a large enclosed shopping center, the financial comparison of different PV system models that can be applied to reduce costs that are associated with large organizations and lighting system. 
The assessment part uh, is slightly different than level one. So each topic area will be assessed individually by short online examination. And also purely the energy uh, management project that needs to be completed. The time commitment is um, way more than level one. It takes approximately 200 CPD hours to complete it. And that make, is made up of roughly 10 hours for each topic that they have selected, 15 in total, so 150 hours plus 50 hours to complete the project. Moving on to the final, to the more advanced um, training qualification, level three advanced energy manager. This is um, has been designed for experienced professionals with at least four years of um, experience in energy management and, are and those who are responsible to um, manage energy within their job, fu job function and are tasked with improving energy efficiency while reducing energy costs. And similar to the way uh, level one uh, works, and um, people who have completed the level two qualification, they can move on to level three, but um, in most cases, we uh, recommend to leave it, to give at least six to 12 months um, between each qualification. The delivery format, um, in this case, there are two different versions. Uh, is available either as a 10-day classroom training course. This is structured in three three-day blocks plus an assessment day that are delivered um, over the course of a three-month period. And then it's also available as a fully online self-paced training um, course, similar to the online versions of level one and level two. Um, here, the focus is more on leadership and strategy planning. There are nine topic areas. And there is a nice balance essentially of leadership and strategic um, topics and also technical ones. Um, so we're looking into energy fundamentals. This is a basic uh, course that aims to ensure that all delegates, it, it acts as a revision really, as a refresher of knowledge that they have and scientific knowledge that they have acquired in the past. There are two different modules that look into leadership uh, for energy managers. Uh, the first one is focused on communication, leader language, and also on ethics. And the second is focused on contracts and innovation. And um, then energy procurement, behavior change, strategic control systems are also covered. And when it comes to the technical areas, uh, we're looking into more decentralized topics, and that would include renewables, alternative supply strategies, this essentially covers uh, CHP, combined hidden power systems, and also district schemes, and finally heat recovery. There is a project component which aims to uh, give delegates the opportunity to apply the knowledge and skills that they have acquired through their studies. And what we need to do is identify an area um, with medium to large energy savings potential and put together an implementation plan with a strategic angle. And this is very important. Normally, we look into medium to long-term uh, projects, and they're focused around the much needed energy transition. And an element of uh, carbon emission reduction is, is incorporated. And a unique aspect of, of the level three qualification is that uh, when it comes to the project, uh, participants have the opportunity, actually, they're required to present it um, to a panel of experts, those are energy EIs, energy management trainers. And the idea is that they will act as if they were selling the project as a proposal to their own senior management team. The assessment requirements are similar to level two and the time commitment sits between level one and level two. So it's approximately 120 hours. And that makes um, is made up of um, 10 hours for each topic plus 30 hours for the project. This slide just provides a list of all the topics and highlights, firstly, the breadth of, of what we cover, and secondly, the flexibility of it, because we, we do have the capacity um, to pick, select uh, certain areas and adapt them in order to create in-house training proposals that would meet specific needs. All of the learning materials are hosted or our online learning center, our online learning academy, which is essentially a modern, intuitive, and, in, and interactive model-based learning management system. And 
for each course, delegates are, are, um, will be able to access the learning materials and expect to find um, a breadth of, 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 of sources that would include pre-reading um, materials, PowerPoint presentation, textbooks, and various activities that uh, will incorporate um, scenario-based elements, presentation elements, calculation-based exercises, uh, clearly information about the project, and all assessments are, will take place through the online center. They will be able to access their grades for both the assessments and the project, and also uh, find course feedback forms and receive their certificates on successful completion. Uh, this is a screenshot of the uh, welcome page on the Learning Center of our Level 1 Certificate in Managed Management Essentials uh, qualification. And this is how uh, the introductory page of one of the Level 1 topics, energy auditing practice, looks like. It's the same for every topic. And on the top right corner here, you can see a navigation panel that takes delegates through the various stages of each um, and contents of each topic. One final thing before I finish my presentation, uh, just a reference to um, a project and a product that fits outside our uh, qualifications framework and energy aware. This um, is a unique training product that we have developed uh, with the aim of um, supporting staff members, everyday people and indeed giving the opportunity to organizations to um, engage more with their workforce when it comes to energy uh, management and energy reduction opportunities. It is a 30-minute interactive e-learning module. And um, it is on purpose. It has been designed to be fun, educational, and light touch, but at the same time covering um, a wide range of, 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 of content and providing um, detailed information on how to identify energy saving opportunities within typical environments, typical settings um, at the workplace and also at, at, at the home, trying to personalize it more in a, at a home environment. On successful completion, uh, the users will be able to state ways in which energy bills can be reduced at home and also identify how energy savings at home can be applied to the workplace. Um, a few years ago, we have actually developed a bespoke version that is suitable for a Middle East audience in partnership with Abu Dhabi Sustainability Group. This is a stranger from that, that project. Thank you all for listening. And I would now now to um, open um, the session to your questions. Thank you, Apostolos. Very informative, really, and, and useful. Um, there's, there's, I think the, the uh, most repeated question was, can, can the audience have a copy of the presentation? Uh, so after, after, of course, the webinar. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So the idea so is we, to make, we, yes, yeah, to share it, yes. Sure, thank you. Um, and if they have any, yes, just to say that if there are any more specific questions or more niche questions that I'm, um, Please feel free to reach out to me directly. My email address is apostolos at energyinst.org. We'll be more than happy to, to respond. Uh, there, there's another question, and maybe you and, and, and myself will, will try and answer this. Uh, it's from uh, um, Giffetson, Emmanuel, saying, I have 10 plus years of experience as manager in power sector. How good? it would be for me to take energy management professional as a career-wise growth? Um, 10 years is a lot of experience. And I would say that level two would be beneficial if, um, um, if the individual is looking for um, a formal recognition as part of um, their CV. I would expect that they would be familiar with most of the contents, although it depends because um, there are so many different topics that are covered, right? So it depends on, on, on their career aspirations because there would be definitely topics that uh, would be new to them. But uh, for someone who has that um, uh, level of experience, I would say that level three would be more appropriate. Mm -hmm. So this is. Uh, Give it in, in case again, if, if you are meaning that uh, 
your, your like your future career or if you're like thinking of becoming uh, an energy management professional um, uh, in, in your let's say future job or future work then uh, I would certainly say yes it's it's um, it's an interesting and important area uh, of work uh, not just nowadays but but even from before but perhaps nowadays the focus is more because of various reasons you know climate change and also the targets that uh, organizations and even countries are now uh, obligating themselves to achieve you know within 10 20 30 years or more so uh, definitely but but that depends really again on um, uh, on the experience you have and what you are trying to achieve in the future um, again uh, I, 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 I received a comment so just to clarify if you have any questions regarding the course the program the energy institute uh, even later on please feel free to uh, send it to apostolos myself or even to the uh, ei email and we'll be happy to answer your your questions um, there was another question on the chat I think it's a more technical one, so we'll maybe just quickly touch up on that. Uh, I think the um, it was about geothermal energy. Um, I'm trying to find the uh, the question itself, but it said, "What do you think about geothermal energy?" Uh, yeah, here it is. Just a second. Uh, what can you tell about renewable geothermal plants? Uh, so th this question is from Lyndon. Lyndon C. Um, um, yeah, what I would say is that we 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 cover that, and um, there is a section on the uh, level three course on renewables about geothermal energy. Uh, it has a role to play clearly moving forward with the, the transition, uh, but um, the. The key, if you like, characteristic of it, that it, it is that it, in most cases it makes sense at a utility scale. Uh, so it's difficult to uh, generate electricity. It's not impossible. There are ways to do that, um, but the efficiency levels are are a bit um, odd at um, at a mid scale or a or a, you know a lower scale, if you like. So uh, for for a small organization, for example, it would be impossible. So it's, it's mostly about the utility scale aspect of it. And obviously the, the geographical characteristics, because there are countries that geothermal um, as part of their energy mix um, is, is very high geothermal energy, but it, it is limited to that, right? So to countries who have, who have the resources. Yeah, thank you. I, I think if I just add a comment on this is that uh, uh, perhaps the, the, the question was short, but the answer would be very, very long, really, uh, to cover every, uh, every aspect of, of the geothermal energy. Uh, but please, if, if you feel you have, you know, you need some more, feel free to contact us or send us emails and, and we'll, we'll either give you the answers or at least guide you where to get your answers from. Um, some more questions are coming. So this is for you, uh, Apostolos. The last e-learning course, Energy Aware, how can we get it? This is from Dr. Hussein Al-Abdul Qadir. Um, so I, it would be great if you get in touch, if you can contact me directly. Uh, it, it is available on an individual basis. And um, so we, you can get it just for, you know, for, for yourself, but normally the way it works um, um, is, um, it has been designed to be circulated, to be rolled out, to, um, to, to an organization's workforce. So in most cases, um, people, organizations are looking to purchase energy where as part of a broader campaign or uh, initiative that they have. And they're looking to roll it out in hundreds of, of, of their staff or tens or hundreds, depending on their size. Um, and the pricing model is structured in a way that the more people it fit through energy where uh, the the lower the cost per user uh, becomes. Uh, what we could do, I would say, is that we can give you access to uh, a teaser that we have uh, developed and a short video, and then uh, we can take it from there. Really. Thank you, Apostolos. Uh, there is a question from Dr. Ahmed uh, al Um How the Energy Institute can support smart technologies for renewable energy applications? Um, I'll, I'll let you start, Apostolos, but I may have also some few to add on, on that uh, after you. Um, 
So yes, through obviously through our training, does the question refer more to training or to actual implementation? Meaning through um, uh, some of our um, you know professional members might have the know-how and they can support. Um, I think uh, again, my, my understanding from the question is that uh, if, if someone has like, um, whether an idea or if you say a solution or, or, or some work, yeah, did you offer degree or only certificate in different levels? Okay, so here's, here's an elaboration on the question. Did you offer degree or only certificate in different levels? Terry, could you please repeat that? Uh, he's asking, did you offer degree or only certificate? In yes, different so it's, uh, these are not academic uh, yeah. qualifications in the sense, yes, uh, degree. They are professional, they are training qualification for professionals. Um, having said that, uh, just to give you an example with the level two energy management professional training qualification, uh, we had someone, one of our graduates who uh, got accepted to, um, um, to enroll on an MSc program, a master of science in one of um, the UK universities on the basis that he has completed the level two qualification without actually having a bachelor, which was one of the key requirements um, in order to, to book on, on the MSc program. So they, they carried out an assessment analysis and they found the level two qualification so useful and robust that uh, made up for the lack of bachelor degree on, on, in this case. But this is on, on a case by case basis. And, but yes, these are not academic qualification. These are training qualifications for professionals. And they also have the um, practical uh, perspective in, uh, in mind. We, we had that when we developed it. Um, uh, one thing I, I would like to clarify again regarding general, if you say uh, uh, services, the EI provide uh, again for the industry. So uh, as a professional body, we are not like a trade organization. So we don't work with, with specific companies or with specific sectors. However, we, we, have, we, we make like a platform where we allow all different, uh, uh, if you say parties, interested professionals uh, to come together and you know, we learn from each other, uh, share knowledge, uh, exchange information, and, um, and, and we also provide, you know, opportunities for networking uh, between, again, different professionals from different countries, from different backgrounds, uh, where they can, again, discuss their, you know, their, if you say, their, their problems, their ideas, uh, but also our technical partners would have also a great, um, if you say, uh, 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 role here, because they also sometimes uh, uh, guide the AI wh what you know wh where to study more or what to work on more because of the problems or the issues they are facing. So there are really many ways that the Energy Institute can can help uh, professionals uh, worldwide. Uh, I think we'll have two more questions. Uh, we'll try and answer them quickly. I'm just cautious of the time. Um, uh, the first one is what is the differences between the energy certificate from EI and other international institutes. So this is for you, Apostolos. Uh, yes, I would say that uh, the main difference if, uh, is that these are long-standing and professionally recognized training qualifications uh, with an international reputation and success. They have been put in practice. Uh, we, we receive excellent feedback. And, and that's, that's it really. And, as I mentioned before, the practical element is very important because they have been developed and they are delivered and taught by um, industry experts. And a key characteristic, even on the fully online self-paced versions is that when someone is hooks on, on these qualifications, one of our lead energy management trainers and professional members of the Institute will be allocated, will be assigned to each delegate as their own personal tutor. So as they go through the contents, they are fully supported uh, throughout their studies and um, by a topic expert. They're not there on their own. Obviously, they can complete it at their own pace. That, that's the nature of it. That's a characteristic. But they are fully supported at the same time, similar to those who will book on one of them the classroom sessions. OK, the, the last question, uh, Apostolos, uh, yes or no? 
to join level two should have passed no. level one? Yeah, and that's a very good question. <laughs> there is no requirement to complete level one to go to level two, complete level two to go to level three, and so on. Um, depending on on the uh, the experience and uh, the background, delegates can go straight to level three, for example, or level two. Thank you. Um, um, thank you, thank you very well, everyone for for joining us. Uh, it was really an interesting session. Your questions were really interesting, and again, feel free to post and send us your uh, questions later on, uh, anytime. Uh, we'd like to connect with every one of you really, and uh, and uh, as as a branch in the Middle East, we we are really keen to work with everyone uh, uh, who's interested in in Oman. You know, when it comes to the energy industry. Uh, thank you very much for um, Oman Society of Engineers again for organizing this uh, event uh, and thank you really for um, for coming to this, if you say, stage where we have this uh, link and tie up with Oman Society of Engineers. I would like to thank especially uh, Shayma for her uh, efforts on that and also uh, Rania and everyone was involved really. Uh, Shayma, I'll, I'll hand over to you to really uh, conclude this webinar. Thank you, Abdel Latif, and thank you, Apostolos. Uh, the session was really informative and um, the explanation about the qualifications was really comprehensive. Um, I hope that uh, all the attendees um, were like, it was interesting to them. And thank you to all of you. Thank you so much. So for all thank the you. attendees, just feel free to reach us, whether EI or OSE, if you have any inquiries about the, uh, whether the course or any concerns regarding energy management. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you. Stay safe. Assalamu alaikum.